Hello! In this video, we will discuss the major research designs used in quantitative research. At the end of the video, you will be able to understand the key attributes of a research design, describe the use and essential parts of popular research designs, and identify the appropriate research design for a particular objective or problem. When we do quantitative research, we usually test claims, typically causal relationship between variables, and testing these claims requires careful selection of appropriate research design. There are three major quantitative research designs, the true experimental design, the quasi-experimental design, and the correlational design. Among the designs mentioned, True experimental designs maximize internal validity. According to John Creswell, a true experimental design tests the impact of a treatment or an intervention on an outcome, controlling for all other factors that might influence that outcome while each participants or subjects are randomly assigned to groups. True experimental designs are often the most rigorous of all research designs and is considered as the gold standard against which all other designs are judged. The three essential ingredients of a true experimental design are manipulation, comparison, and random assignment. Manipulation means that the researcher creates a situation in which the causal variable or your independent variable is present and can be purposefully changed, alter, or influence. By creating a scenario where the causal variable is present, a causal relation is more plausible because you can establish that the change in your outcomes or your dependent variable was caused by the causal variable and not the other way around. Comparison further establishes causality by comparing a situation where the causal variable is absent to a situation where it is present. Then, showing that there is no change in the outcomes when the causal variable is absent while there is a change when it is present. This eliminates the threat of maturation. Example, a researcher wants to test the causal relationship between exposure to bad words or swear words and children's behavior. He measured how many times a group of children hear bad words or swear words and their behavior using valid and reliable instrument. Suppose he found out that there is a negative relationship between the two variables. Children who hear more bad words or swear words behaves badly than children who hear less. The researcher can conclude that exposure to bad words can cause children to behave badly. However, one may argue that maybe children who behave badly hears a lot of bad words or swear words because their parents scold them due to their behavior and use such kind of language. The researcher might have changed the design of his research. He can create two groups. The first group is exposed to bad words, whereas the other is not. After, it was found out that the first group behaves poorly compared to the other group. This design has a stronger case of causality compared to the first. However, one may argue that maybe the children assigned to the first group behaves poorly in the first place compared to the other group. This can be solved using randomization. If the researcher randomly assigned the children into two groups, then subjects will be equally distributed based on their prior behavior, on average. Undeniably, there is a possibility that randomization fails, but this is due to chance. Replicating the study will help us solve this problem. What if random assignment is impossible, but you still want to investigate a causal relation? Example. In education research, where students are grouped homogeneously, meaning that most intelligent students were assigned in the first section 
while others were assigned in general sections. In that case, we automatically consider quasi-experimental design. According to Levy, a quasi-experimental design is like a true experimental design. But participants or subjects are not randomly assigned to groups. Quasi-experimental designs may involve experimental groups only or experimental and control groups. Since randomization is not present in this design, the selection threat to internal validity is always present. Pre-existing difference between groups may exist. This can be solved by doing a pre-test and post-test. Example, instead of randomly assigning children into two groups, the researcher measured the behavior of the children at the beginning, also known as pre-test, and ending of the experiment, also known as the post-test. With the use of pre-test, we can establish that the behavior of the two groups at the start of the experiment is the same. We can also assess if there are threats of maturation. What if you can't manipulate the independent variable? Correlational design may be used where no causal direction is specified or only very modest. Cautionary causal inferences are made. According to Tuckman and Harper, a correlational design explores the relationship between variables using statistical analysis. In a correlational study, a researcher collects two or more sets of data from a group of subjects for analysis that attempts to determine the relationship between them. So, in correlational studies, we do not manipulate or select, we just measure. If you found out that there is a relationship between two variables, we cannot conclude with great confidence that the change of the dependent variable was caused by the independent variable because it could be the other way around. The two variables are just correlated, and correlation does not imply causation. In summary, to classify research designs, you may use this illustration. First, we ask if the independent variable is manipulated. If no, then it is a correlational design. Then we ask if there is a treatment and control groups. If no, then it is a quasi-experimental design. Finally, we ask if the subjects or participants were randomly assigned. If yes, then it is a true experimental design. Otherwise, it is a quasi-experimental design. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you learned something.